So we're traveling on the freeway. We're going about 60 miles an hour. And right now it's on LTE. So we can't test it. <laughs> this <laughs> this <laughs> man. <laughs> Damn. Oh, it's back on 5G. Okay. <laughs> If you haven't heard of 5G by now, it's the next generation of cellular technology that promises high-speed mobile data. In a bid to show off its 5G readiness, Sprint invited a handful of media publications to go around town and test out its 5G network. This is similar to what Verizon did in Chicago, where we explored their 5G network with the Moto Z3 and the Galaxy S10 5G. This time around, though, we are in hot and humid Dallas with another premium 5G phone. Now, before we get into testing, let's get a little bit more familiar with the device that we will be with all day. It's the LG V50 Thin Q. We saw it in MWC. So I have it right now. I'm going to unbox it. So let's just take a look. So, unboxing oh, here. You'll see a cloth, and this is the LG V50 Thin Q. It has a 6.4 inch OLED display. So it's quite large, and it's LG and Sprint's first 5G phone. So you can see that it's emphasizing 5G a lot here. They really want you to know that it has the new network connected. We're gonna unlock it here. And okay, looks like it's already set up, which is pretty good. We're gonna do a lot of testing on this. Now, it's equipped with a Snapdragon 855 processor and it uses a X50 modem. And inside, let's see what we have inside really quick. Oh, you'll see your standard uh, charger and USB-C plug and it looks like LG is including a pair of earbuds as well. The phone also has a 4 ampere hour battery so that should be enough to get us through the day with 5G's testing but who knows. We'll make a note that right now it's at 91% at the beginning of our day so we'll check back in when we're done with our test to see what it will be like at the end. Alright so that's a really quick look at the V50. If you want to know more about the phone itself, we have a hands-on at CNET.com. But other than that, let's get to testing. First test we're going to do is actually going to be on this bus. Sprint emphasizes how much wider and broader its network is compared to other competitors. So we're going to actually hop inside and drive a small route around Dallas to see how well and consistent a V50 phone can latch on to Sprint's 5G network on the go. So, let's hop inside. So we're on the bus right now, and we're going to try to talk underneath the Sprint guy, because he's talking right now. But what you'll see on the screen is the consistency and the speeds of Sprint's 5G network. So on the left, you'll see its data download speeds, and we've seen it top off as high as 700 uh, megabits per second. And then on the right, you'll see our route where we're going around Dallas. When it's green, that's when we have 5G connectivity. And when it drops off to 4G LTE, it's supposed to turn black, but so far, we haven't seen any drop off. The route has been green the entire time, which is good because that shows that the network so far has been reliable. So we're here at the Village on the Parkway, and we're gonna do your standard speed test. On the left is the LG V50 using Sprint's 5G network, and on the right is the LG G8, which is connected to Sprint's 4G LTE network. So let's go, All right, press and go, and let's get started. Okay, so already you can see that the V50 is really, really fast. It's already going to the 100 megabits per second, and on the right over here, the G8 is barely touching seven uh, megabits per second. It's already really, really fast. You'll see that the V50 has topped at 140 megabits per second, and the G8 has topped off at 6.61. So there's clearly a huge difference in speed. So we did speed test, but let's do a real world test. Let's download an app. I chose PUBG. It's a huge game. It's 1.86 gigs. So we're going to see how quickly the V50 and the G8 downloads it. So bear with me here. It's a little awkward. I'm going to try to install both of them. I'm going to deselect Wi-Fi only because we're using the network and we're going to time it. All right. Three, two, one. So just checking in, we're a little over 50%. We're actually at 64% here on the V50. It's been about a minute and 53 seconds. Over here on the G8, you can see that it's barely downloaded. It's only been 2%. So uh, this is kind of 
really exciting because this is just gonna make downloading apps and videos that much more faster on 5G. So the V50 is approaching 96% on downloading PUBG and it's been about two minutes and 45 seconds. It's, and it's just finished, it's super fast. And on the G8, we're still at 2% the last time we checked in. So the V50 is really fast, it's installing right now. And um, yeah, this is an excellent phone. I don't think we'll actually finish running both tests because you know we got places to go, but already we could tell that at three minutes, it's barely made a dent and the V50 is already installing it. In Chicago, when we were testing Verizon's 5G network, you saw that we had to stand really close to a node, about 100 to 300 feet away from it. And that's because millimeter wave, although very, very fast, you have to be very close to get all its advantages. But under Sprint's network, it's different. The carrier built its 5G technology on top of its already existing LTE network. That means it can provide more coverage to more people. And it also means that you don't have to be tied to a node to access its 5G network. But speeds might not be as fast as if you were using millimeter wave. So we're at another testing site. It's actually a car dealership. And we're going to try our hand at downloading an episode off of Netflix. Uh, it's an episode of Blue Planet 2. It's We'll just do the first episode and let's start downloading. So on the left again, it's the V50 on 5G and on the right is the GA on LTE. We actually ran this test earlier before and it ended around 45 seconds. This one's taking slightly longer. This is, I think, gonna finish up in about a minute. Um, so that's kind of the range that we've been seeing in terms of results. Still going, still much better than LTE, even though the results here are a little bit longer than last time. Um, it's still pretty good. It's one minute and 35 seconds. Over here on the right, you'll see that it's not even, you know, a quarter of the way finished. Now, something to keep in mind is while the speed is impressively fast, we're one of the first few people who are testing Sprint's 5G network. In addition to Dallas, Sprint is launching 5G in three other cities, and it's supposed to cover 11.5 million people. But again, 11.5 million people aren't using the 5G network today, so of course we're speeding right along. So we're on our way to our next testing site, but while we get there, we wanted to see how 5G is, again, in a moving vehicle. So let's start this now, um, right here. And you'll have to forgive us, it's a little bumpy here in this car, but it's going right now, it does have 5G connectivity, and speeds are great. It's at 120, 130 megabits per second, and it looks like it might top off even at 160, and that's pretty good. Before we ran this test, we see it actually, we saw the network cut in and out from 5G and LTE, and that's because Sprint hasn't blanketed the whole city uh, with 5G just yet. So right here, we see that it topped off at 156 megabits per second, which isn't bad at all. And again, that's when we're on the highway, we're going about 30, 40 miles an hour. So that's pretty good. So we're here at another testing site. It's actually nearby a recreational center and it's test number, I don't know. It's, I've lost count, it's been a long day. And we're going to test how long it takes to download a full season on Amazon Prime. It's of the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. You have to excuse me because I've never seen it. I know it's really good and I'll try to watch it. All right, we're about the halfway point. We're at episode four and the V50 has downloaded 41% of it and it's been only one minute and 56 seconds. Meanwhile, the G8 is still on the pilot episode. This time it is at 3%. So some progress, but not a lot. Now we're on the last episode, episode eight. The V50 is 86% into finishing it and it just finished. It's just under four minutes at three minutes and 59 seconds. Meanwhile, the G8 is still downloading the pilot at 12%. After a full day of exploring 5G, what are we left with? Well, first, we started testing in earnest around 1 p.m. It is now 8.49 p.m. and the battery is at 17%. I wanna say that that's not actually bad. That definitely lasts longer than a workday and we put this phone through a lot of tests. We downloaded tons of things. The screen was about 50 to 80% brightness the whole time and it was also on standby for about the last three hours. I also thought speeds were incredibly fast. In some testing spots, we average 100 megabits per second. In others, we got 400 megabits per second, and that's really great. 
I was also incredibly impressed with how fast the V50 downloaded a full season of a show in under five minutes. Compared to Verizon though, we never came close to topping one gigabit. The S10 5G also downloaded PUBG a full minute faster than we did. But Sprint says it's not really going for peak performance or having the highest numbers. Instead, it wants to have an overall excellent experience for the average user. And for the most part, that's what we got. What I liked most about my experience was that I didn't have to be near a node or a tower to get connected to 5G. We just drove to a designated area and we were already connected to the network. The icon was also consistent throughout the whole time except for when we were driving on the highway when it was switching between LTE and 5G. But again, we never got speeds as fast as what we saw in Chicago with Verizon. Personally, I want to get a 5G phone right now. The V50 costs over $1,100, so the technology is still very expensive for users, and 5G is only available in select cities. This will change as the year progresses, though, so I would wait off until the end of this year or until 2020. While I don't know what kind of companies will be on the horizon for 5G, and there's no guarantee that every company will have a positive impact, I'm still excited that I got to see a glimpse of what it's capable of. Plus, who wouldn't welcome the ability to download troves of movies and shows on their phones in a matter of minutes?